Uh, hi, uh, hi everybody. Well, thank you uh, for inviting me here. It's a great group of people. Uh, and uh, I'd like to, okay, I should say got it, I guess. And uh, I'd like to uh, tell you something uh, in uh, the interface of dynamics and number theory. Uh, so uh, I'll basically start with number theory and then uh, gradually you'll see more and more dynamical stuff. So what, uh, what I should uh, say here is that it is the, uh, the main result is uh, joined with uh, Andreas uh, Strombergson. Uh, and uh, Shu Cheng Yu. Uh, if time allows, I'll also talk about uh, results with Anora Garao, some extensions. Uh, maybe it uh, will be somewhere at the end. And uh, uh, let me uh, uh, explain. Uh, so there are uh, many strange words. Uh, why do I have shrinking targets? Uh, uh, which homogeneous spaces, and also what is Dirichlet's theorem. So let me start with Dirichlet's theorem and the Fontaine approximation. This is the number theoretical part. Uh, you, uh, well, basically that's that's the theorem. What I am uh, doing here is taking the supremum norm. Uh, y is a matrix, Q is a vector. Uh, actually, uh, I think this is not uh, correct. Uh, Q is the N. Uh, and uh, and then uh, you can approximate. So Dirichlet's theorem says that you can basically approximate integer uh, values of this system of linear forms with integers, with a good precision. And I like to raise uh, norms to approximate to appropriate powers, and then the formulas are uh, look very uh, very nice. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you uh, specialize to uh, just approximation of real numbers, uh, you have the familiar inequality y minus p over q less than uh, one over uh, uh, t q and uh, q is less than uh, t. Or may maybe, maybe you can just uh, write uh, it like this. This is simpler, q y minus p. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what you want to uh, solve and you can always do this. And uh, uh, there is a corollary also proved by Dirichlet that you can uh, uh, compare uh, the discrepancy with the uh, denominator itself. So this is uh, just familiar uh, inequality uh, y minus uh, y minus what y minus pi p over q. It's less than one over q squared. Okay, and then. Uh, 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 and then uh, uh, so-called metric number theory uh, deals with various improvements, enhancements, uh, and so on of these inequalities, what can be approximated better, what can be approximated worse. And in particular, uh, uh, the main question uh, is uh, what happens if in this uh, inequality systems one and two, the right-hand side uh, is replaced by a faster decreasing function of t. So I'm talking about this right-hand side here. Uh, or this right hand side here. Uh, what, and what happens for uh, typical in particular, typical with respect to Lebesgue measure. So most of what I'm talking about uh, will be about uh, results for typical wise, although it's not, uh, I mean, there are other things that can be said. And, uh, uh, oops, so something doesn't work for me here. Okay, and what I, what I was trying to say is that uh, it is actually quite well studied in the setting of number two, so-called asymptotic approximation, but not so well for one. So the, so the setting improving uh, uh, this setting is uh, basically some new stuff and people were uh, paying attention to it uh, recently much more. And I'll talk about uh, history as well. Okay, so let me first uh, talk about the setting two real, uh, real quickly. Uh, okay, so I'll move. So uh, I want to take uh, the function 
uh, some uh, decreasing function, which I'll call the approximating function psi. And then uh, uh, WMN of psi will be the set of psi approximal matrices. So those y's for which uh, you have infinitely many solutions of this inequality. So now instead of uh, uh, one over q to the n, you have this uh, function. And then uh, uh, there is Hinchin's theorem. Uh, and uh, the advantage of having these uh, uh, powers here uh, is that uh, the condition in Hinchin's theorem is uniform. It doesn't depend on the dimensions, which is what I really, really like. Okay, so you have this convergence or divergence. And uh, in fact, monotonicity of uh, Psi is only needed when uh, in dimension one, uh, and uh, the rest uh, is true anyway. So this is related to Duff and Shepard conjecture. And uh, also uh, what, it, uh, uh, what you can see is that the con condition is stable with respect to replaced Psi by a constant, right? So this series converges. If you multiply by two, it still converges and so on. And uh, for example, uh, I, I want to pay attention to this uh, uh, specific function one over T and call it Psi one. Uh, so the, uh, from Dirichlet it follows that uh, functions uh, that matrix is approximal with with this function is uh, uh, is the whole thing, and then by Hinchin's theorem, if you uh, multiply it by C, it will still have full measure. And by the way, the complement to the union of all these guys is a set of badly approximal matrices. Uh, so uh, so this is what uh, so. Trying to say is that the complement uh, is still in some sense big, but uh, it has measure zero. Okay, and uh, one other remark that uh, uh, the theory uh, comes from the fact that it is a limb subset. Uh, what we're talking about, so uh, in fact, y belongs to this set if and only if uh, uh, this system has a non-trivial integer solution for infinitely many uh, natural numbers t. Okay, so and this system is rather easy, right? So it's basically uh, some kind of so we're talking about unions of uh, neighborhoods of affine subspaces. Okay, so we can we can write uh, write something uh, write uh, it in, in such a way. Uh, again, if we uh, restrict to m and then equal to one, then uh, we are talking about various intervals uh, taking the unions of intervals, uh, and then. Uh, uh, to prove uh, something like this, you need to have some kind of quasi-independence estimates for these unions, and there are various uh, methods to do this coming from geometry or arithmetic. Uh, so uh, it turned out to be not such a difficult problem. And then uh, let me switch to improving number one. And uh, well, to basically to improve the original Dirichlet theorem, uh, not its corollary, I need to consider not limb subset, but limb inset. And so this is my main definition. Uh, for today, I'll define the set DMN of Psi uh, to be the set of Psi directly improvable matrices. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that instead of uh, uh, T uh, here, I have uh, some uh, right-hand side, uh, sorry, instead, instead of one over T, so before we had uh, psi one of t, which is one over t. Okay, and uh, well, uh, then uh, uh, it's clear that you, it's too good to be true to want it for all t, but uh, uh, I want to uh, demand that this uh, has has solution for all uh, uh, large enough values of t. Okay, so Dirichlet's theorem says that uh, uh, if you put Psi one here, you have everything. Okay, so why is it uh, an interesting uh, uh, setup? Uh, so the interest comes from uh, the paper of Davenport and Schmidt in 1969, uh, who showed this uh, very surprising uh, sharp drop. Well, at least for me, when I first uh, learned about it, it was very surprising. You replace, uh, you replace it by uh, uh, 0 0.99, uh, uh, over T, and uh, suddenly uh, uh, the set of solutions uh, as uh, the set of Y's for which uh, uh, 
you can solve this has, has measure zero. So in, in other words, uh, what they proved, uh, well, again, let me maybe write it in the case, uh, in the one dimensional case. So if C is less than one, this implies that uh, for almost uh, every uh, Y, uh, real numbers, in real number, there exists a sequence TK going to infinity, uh, such that uh, uh, you write uh, YQ minus P less than C over TK, and then uh, Q is less than TK. And this has no non-zero integer solution. Okay, so if you put one, things are very different, but uh, just a little bit less than one, uh, suddenly everything changes. Okay, so this sounds uh, uh, rather, uh, rather strange, and uh, I'll try to explain why this is happening. Uh, so, but first let me uh, uh, pose some uh, questions. Uh, so now that this, we have this result, we can just uh, see uh, and try to find the, the right condition for this psi, so uh, and this will be kind of between uh, one over t and uh, c over t, where c is less than one. So maybe there is some kind of log factor or some other power uh, which uh, distinguishes the measure zero from full measure. So that, that's a natural question, and uh, uh, I think uh, we first tried to. Uh, uh, so it is actually answered uh, for m and then equal to one in uh, my paper with Nick Wadley in uh, 2018, uh, and the method was using uh, continued fractions. So you can express in one dimension in, in, uh, things in continued fractions uh, and uh, figure it out. And then uh, uh, if uh, minimum of M and then is bigger than one, it's still uh, not done. And uh, what uh, I'll talk about is uh, some partial result. which is quite close to full result, but still not uh, full result. Uh, so, so this seems to be uh, much more difficult and much more sensitive problem. Uh, you might ask, uh, why is it the case? Uh, because th there should be some duality between lip soup and limit sets, right? So I was, uh, before I was talking about uh, some kind of EKs, which were uh, unions of neighborhoods of affine subspaces. So now uh, we, are, we end up talking about uh, limb soup set of their complements, and uh, these uh, complements uh, are much more complicated, basically. Okay, so there are uh, complements of those uh, neighborhoods, and what uh, to do with this uh, is not uh, is not clear. So okay, so there is a. a uh, there's a question about continued fractions. Maybe I'll uh, answer later if you don't mind. So you can actually uh, uh, just try to respond to chat because I happen to see it. So uh, so so you can write that uh, y belongs to this set uh, dmn psi if and only if uh, uh, some condition on continued fractions uh, happens. Okay, and this is uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and what uh, what is an S insufficient condition? I'll also tell later because I'll try to state uh, the general theorem uh, where I'll have this condition plus something else, and this something else will not meet. So I'll answer this question uh, uh, a bit a bit later. Okay, so now uh, let me try to get to the main result. 
So, uh, so the crucial critical case for this to have zero measure or not is when, uh, when this happens, uh, when uh, uh, so your function psi is one over t minus something, right? And this something uh, now uh, now this something has to go to zero, because if it doesn't go to zero, that uh, I am in in Davenport and Schmidt uh, situation. Uh, okay, so uh, so you can uh, we can work with psi, or sometimes it makes more sense to work with this phi, uh, which you can of course express uh, in terms of psi uh, uh, like this. And so my condition uh, uh, will be uh, involving this function phi. And uh, uh, what I uh, what I want to do is I want to assume both. Uh, uh, these functions to be non-increasing. Uh, okay, uh, it's some kind of uh, technical condition. Maybe it's not so important, uh, but uh, uh, but let me do it like this. And the case uh, of uh, uh, of the function having positive limit corresponds to David Paul Schmidt situation with c less than one. Hold on, let, let me shut the door and I'll be right back. Okay, now it's quieter, I hope. So, so here's the theorem, and it, uh, it'll answer the question I got in chat. It's kind of uh, uh, very long, uh, but at least it has the condition. So it's joined with Andreas and Xu Cheng. You take arbitrary m and n, you take this function psi, and this uh, phi gives you the discrepancy, the difference from uh, one over t, and then uh, I, uh, we have uh, two constants, uh, kappa d and lambda d, which depend quadratic from uh, on, on d, where d is m plus n. And uh, now we have uh, uh, certain convergence divergence condition. Uh, and if this series converges, uh, well, I am also calling it one, even though now this one uh, uh, means a different thing, maybe. Maybe I should uh, uh, call it a, a red one, something like this. Uh, so if this series converges, then uh, this uh, set is a full back measure. So we have uh, uh, phi to this power times log one over phi to some other power, and uh, we want to uh, we want this condition to be optimal. Uh, I'll explain where it comes from, uh, and uh, then it, it diverges. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to prove that uh, uh, the measure is, uh, is zero. We, we need a very strange uh, condition, uh, which uh, is very hard to read, so I'm not even going to read it. Uh, so some uh, limit for certain ratios uh, will, uh, if, if the if limit for certain ratios uh, is going to zero, then uh, the divergence case can be, can can be can be treated. Uh, uh, well, uh, we really uh, believe that this condition shouldn't be here, but for now it is here. So let me uh, uh, give some examples. So this condition will be called two in the red square. Uh, and by the way, uh, our result uh, involving continued fractions. Uh, was uh, gave exactly exactly this condition. Uh, so of course uh, we have that uh, lambda two uh, is equal to uh, so okay so uh, so so if d is d is equal to two uh, right so so we have uh, psi d uh, or kappa kappa d is equal to one, uh, lambda d is also equal to one. Okay, and uh, and the condition was uh, uh, just the sum uh, over k uh, over k uh, phi of k over k log one over. Phi of k. Converges or diverges. Okay, so let me uh, show some examples. Uh, for example, what if you have this log 
the discrepancy. We have one over t minus uh, c times log t to some power over t. And then uh, uh, you can check that uh, the critical uh, exponent is one over kappa d, critical exponent tau. And uh, there is no problem with condition two. It is always satisfied. Okay. Uh, so the conclusion is uh, that you have, uh, so for this family of functions, you have full measure if tau is uh, bigger than one over uh, high d. In one dimensional case, it was bigger than one, and of zero measure otherwise. Okay. But uh, if you want to fine tune this a little bit, for example, uh, uh, you keep this uh, critical exponent one over high d, and then you put log log t to some factor. Then uh, 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 your situation becomes trickier. Okay, so uh, the divergence uh, uh, of this one uh, is uh, equivalent to saying that tau is uh, less than lambda d plus one over chi d. Uh, but uh, sometimes we do this, we get this too, sometimes, and sometimes we don't. So we can only prove that. Uh, 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 that uh, this condition guarantees full measure and this condition guarantees zero measure. Okay, so it's uh, a bit annoying, uh, but uh, at least I'll, I'll try to briefly say uh, why, uh, where this annoyance comes from. Okay, so uh, anyway, so the bottom line is that we have this uh, 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 series that uh, decides uh, what happens in this in this problem uh, fine tuning of uh, Davenport and Schmidt. All right, so now uh, I guess it's time to explain why uh, dynamics is involved. So usually the history uh, of uh, using dynamics in number theory is not great. Uh, sometimes it's great, but uh, more often than not, you do something by dynamics and then number theorists come and say, well, all right, it's very easy. You just do this and that, and you can also be fine. So as far as this problem is goes, uh, goes I, I don't really uh, see how to do it yet. Uh, so it's, it is one of the uh, domains where uh, you can do something uh, using dynamics and uh, uh, classical methods don't show uh, anything close, but uh, anyway, uh, let me uh, go through the dynamical approach, which actually can be extracted from Davenport and Schmidt because the way uh, they proved it uh, uh, can be translated into dynamical terms. Uh, and then uh, uh, there was uh, the correspondence between approximation and dynamics was spelled by Danny, and it uh, goes uh, uh, now it, uh, I mean, uh, usually goes by the name Danny correspondence, uh, which we, was the term we in, invented in uh, the paper with Margulis in 1998. And then uh, with Badley, we adapted it uh, to the uh, directly improvement situation. And also uh, uh, I should mention my work with Barack Weiss. 2008, uh, where we also utilize this correspondence. So, uh, so let me try to. So, what I want to do today is try to explain how dynamics enters the picture, and uh, I want to take uh, the easier case uh, just for explanation. So, my function for now will be constant times psi one. So, it is and c is less than one. So, this is the Davenport Schmidt situation. And I want to see what happens after we translate the setup into the language of flows and the space of lattices. So why lattices? Well, uh, so I let me fix uh, the C, fix the matrix Y, and then uh, you have this directly, directly con improvement condition. So let me write it down uh, like this. Uh, for all large enough T, uh, this system has a non-trivial integer solution. Okay, that's, uh, uh, that's basically basically the definition and uh, let me draw a picture uh, corresponding to this definition. It means that uh, uh, you have uh, this uh, Rm uh, here and Rn here. Uh, and then you have uh, a very 
long and uh, thin rectangle, which uh, so one side is C over T, another side is T. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, you have uh, these objects, uh, which are uh, the ve vectors with coordinates yq minus p and q. Uh, maybe it's something like this for all integer q. And uh, uh, somehow uh, there must be an integer point here. Okay, so that's what uh, what this condition says. Okay, and uh, uh, then you can tweak it a little bit. And the way you tweak it is that you take this rectangle and turn it into a box. So uh, equivalently, with some uh, uh, with a little bit of computation, you can uh, do the following. Again, you have these two axes. And now you just uh, squeeze this rectangle so that uh, its uh, area is still the same. No area, there, this d dimensional volume. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, so you have m coordinates with. Uh, 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 okay, so uh, so so the way the way these uh, exponents uh, are uh, worked out uh, guarantees that c uh, the t cancels. And you and you only have this uh, uh, constant uh, term here, and you can make it to be the same. Now you have uh, a cube, and uh, what you are doing by this is to is multiply uh, the first value by something big and the second value by something uh, small. So you are applying a diagonal matrix, and again you have uh, uh, some uh, kind of uh, discrete set of points. Uh, so now uh, you're talking about uh, applying this uh, diagonal matrix to this. And again, you want an integer vector here. That's the condition. Okay. So uh, we are, uh, and uh, so basically I moved from this setup to so called geometry of numbers, studying lattices. Uh, and uh, let me uh, give uh, this notation. So, so uh, uh, lambda sub y will be exactly this lattice. So this is uh, the set of all uh, vectors of this form will be uh, uh, a little bit, I'll call lambda sub y. Okay, and uh, a sub s will be this diagonal matrix. And then uh, what, we, what we showed is the following, that uh, you have this directly approval condition. If and only if for all large enough S, this lattice has a non-zero vector in the ball uh, with radius C m uh, to power M over D. Okay, so this ball with respect to the supreme norm. Okay, and uh, uh, you can uh, restate it as follows. Uh, it means that AS lambda Y is not in certain set k sub c to the power m over d, uh, where I'm uh, using this uh, notation k sub r to denote uh, the set of lattices with, which have trivial intersection with the ball of radius r. Okay, and uh, here we uh, we are in the situation of uh, certain, certain uh, nice compact subsets in the space of lattices. Uh, so uh, I can uh, maybe uh, draw a picture uh, of this uh, space XD. So this X sub D is actually SLDR modulo SLDZ, the space of unimodular lattices. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, uh, a certain set K sub R. Uh, right here, uh, and uh, uh, then you start with lambda y, uh, maybe it's somewhere here, and then you apply a sub s, and then you don't want to enter this kr for, for large enough s, so this uh, area is forbidden completely, okay? That's, uh, that's a dynamical interpretation of Dirichlet improvement, which is essentially between the lines of Davenport Schmidt. Uh, and it's, it's important to uh, remark that uh, if R is less than one, 
uh, these sets actually have non-empty interior. And uh, if uh, uh, also if uh, if R is bigger than one, then uh, this KR is empty. So this is Minkowski's uh, lemma. Okay. So uh, so R equal to one is some kind of a critical uh, parameter. Okay, because uh, uh, what happens uh, with uh, k equal to one is uh, 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 so you have this cube of radius one, and then uh, by Minkowski's lemma, where you absolutely uh, must have uh, intersection of uh, any unimodular lattice with this uh, cube but if you replay if you remove uh, if you decrease the radius then uh, it's not going uh, sometimes uh, then it's not going to happen for all lattices and you have some set of lattices for which it doesn't happen and this is a green set a sub r okay uh, so uh, any questions maybe i should uh, stop and uh, Ask if I can do something here. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, so uh, uh, now the conclusion is that this uh, explains how Devert Paul Schmidt's theorem can actually be derived from the ergodicity of the action of this group AS. And this is a case of fixed targets. Uh, my topic is shrinking targets, but for now I'm not shrinking anything. I'm just keeping the same target. Let's uh, figure it out. So, uh, so you have this directly improvement property uh, with uh, the function given by c times psi one, and this happens if and only if the tra trajectory eventually avoids some neighborhood of this set, uh, k sub one. Okay, so k sub one, I mean, what is k sub one? k sub one is the set of lattices with uh, this property that have uh, vectors on the boundary of this cube, but no vectors inside. Okay, it's a rather small set. And this set is called uh, the critical locus of the supremum norm. So these lattices are called critical. Uh, and uh, uh, what uh, uh, maybe I can draw. Some picture again. Again, this uh, this will be the space x d. I'm drawing it like this because it's non compact, uh, but it has finite measure. So this part which goes to infinity, the cusp is kind of uh, thin. I mean, it's thick, but in terms of the measure, is is thin. Uh, and then uh, somewhere you have uh, uh, this uh, set k sub one. And uh, here you have k uh, sub r. Okay, and uh, again, uh, uh, if uh, your uh, uh, starting point is in such a way that uh, the trajectory does not reach it, this set at all, so this is not allowed, uh, then uh, then we have this directly improvement. Uh, business with this uh, uh, function c1 and this is uh, very strange if you believe that uh, these trajectories can act should actually go anywhere so uh, you have the notion of ergodicity of this action and the uh, ergodicity tells you that almost every y will actually not have this property okay and uh, by the way, uh, this set K1 plays uh, an important role in our proof. So the structure of this set is given by uh, uh, theorem of Hayash. It was actually conjectured by Minkowski and proved by Hayash. Uh, so this uh, set is what you think it is. Namely, uh, you have, okay, maybe I should uh, uh, draw, uh, draw a picture here. Let's, let's, let me take D equal to two. Uh, and t is equal to two. Uh, of course, you have uh, uh, the lattice Z two, which uh, belongs to K one, right? It's uh, 
there is not there is nothing in the interior, uh, but also you can shear uh, it's in it in the vertical direction, and also shear in the horizontal direction separately. Okay, and so what you what you'll uh, see is uh, the union of uh, the orbits of this uh, upper triangle and lower triangular groups. Okay, so uh, in the uh, uh, space of lattices, uh, you can. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, space X two. Stopped working. Uh, space X two. Then this uh, this guy uh, is the union of two closed horror cycles. This is K one. Or maybe number theorists uh, prefer to understand this space as a unit tension bundle to the modular surface. This is also great uh, because uh, here you have uh, this horror cycle. One horror cycle consists of uh, vectors pointing upwards, and another consists of vectors pointing downwards. Okay, so that's uh, that's. Uh, but topologically. It is uh, just the union of these two circles, and uh, for for d uh, it could d bigger than two, uh, it's kind of a mess. You have a lot of uh, so so when d is equal, let's say d equal to equal to three, you have a lot of uh, three-dimensional tori, which are six of them actually, which are somehow glued together in a very strange way, and that's uh, this is the this is this is the set. Okay. And, uh, and this is, again, this is K1. Uh, and uh, if you want to have K sub R, when uh, R is less than one, you need to have some kind of a neighborhood of this set, but not just the epsilon neighborhood. Very complicated neighborhood. Okay, but uh, anyway, uh, for the purpose of proving them in Port-Schmidt's theorem, it doesn't matter. We just have some open set and every almost every orbit should end. That's ergodicity, and then and then you derive everything by ergodicity from ergodicity. So uh, uh, now the argument uh, goes similarly for functions which decay. Uh, I guess I have to speed up a little bit. Uh, so uh, so it is, uh, uh, and then uh, if uh, if the if uh, this phi goes to zero, it turns out that uh, you're actually talking about uh, targets which shrink. So you have this K1, which is somewhere here. And then you have uh, uh, R of S here, K R of S, which becomes sure, smaller and smaller. And uh, uh, you need to have this condition. AS is not in K. So it's about uh, rate of shrinking, rate of approximating this set, uh, set K, K1, okay? So, uh, so that's uh, that's how this directly improvement uh, is reduced to shrinking target theory in dynamical systems. That's basically what we did with Nick Wadley, and uh, then uh, you can make it even uh, nicer if you discretize. And uh, so uh, you have this uh, uh, yellow set, and uh, you make. Uh, uh, say brown set out of it by uh, moving it in the AS direction by in time one, and then you have uh, this discrete condition. You now have uh, a j. J is a natural number, and uh, this becomes uh, this set becomes uh, b j, and uh, for large enough j, you don't want to get there. Okay, so in other words, uh, actually I made a mistake here. This should be a complement. So why isn't the complement if and only if a j applied to lambda y belongs to this b j for infinitely many j? Okay, so uh, so we reduced it to uh, basically to some kind of barrel cantelli lemma, and of course barrel cantelli lemma says. That the right condition and the sum of measures of the j's uh, is uh, if, if the sum of measures is finite, then you have uh, almost surely you have finitely many solutions. If the sum of measures is infinite and something else, 
uh, then uh, uh, the number of solutions is infinite. And this something else, uh, basically some kind of quasi-independence properties of this uh, family. Okay, so now I have to rush a little bit. Uh, I guess uh, at least what is uh, left, there are several steps. First of all, uh, we need to come, come, uh, come up with a, with a measure. I mean, what is really the measure of this set? Uh, uh, and mu is now the HAR measure, the SLDR invariant probability measure on the space of lattices. So we need to, co to compute it or to estimate for small enough R, not sorry, for R, uh, R close to one. And then you want to also have this BJ, uh, which is this brown set, which you get from KR by extending it in, uh, in one direction. Actually, I have to, I have to say that I put this uh, uh, equivalence in uh, quotation marks uh, because it's kind of uh, it's a little bit approximate. You need to squeeze it between two sets, and uh, in this approximation, you're actually using the monotonicity property of uh, the function. Uh, okay, so uh, so then uh, then you need to estimate this uh, this measure, and uh, then uh, uh, you need to establish some kind of quasi dependence of uh, pre images. And also another step is to go from almost every lattice lambda to almost every lambda of the form uh, uh, lambda sub y. So, so again, uh, uh, for the first uh, part, uh, remember that uh, in uh, uh, when d is equal to two, we are talking about uh, a set of uh, the form some kind of uh, neighborhood of these two circles, and it's even more complicated in uh, high dimensions. And uh, now you need to move it a little bit in the transversal direction and also do some work. So this, this is actually the bulk of the paper. Okay, so this uh, one is, uh, uh, so, so most, work is done is done here and so let me uh, show you the main measure estimate uh, remember that we had this uh, exponents kappa d and lambda d and then uh, the measure of k sub r is uh, uh, as r goes to one is uh, approximately one minus r to some power times log of one minus r uh, to some other power Okay, and uh, with uh, Shu Cheng Yu, we actually did the case d equal to two before. Okay, so uh, uh, and then uh, as a corollary, we can actually uh, look at uh, these uh, shifts, uh, the cylinder, and uh, the, the only difference uh, is that uh, uh, we go from this power to this power. Okay, so just uh, uh, simply because you lose uh, one dimension, so so it's uh, but it also requires uh, requires a lot of work. And then uh, uh, for parts uh, uh, three and four, uh, well, uh, uh, here is where dynamics is important. So before we only had uh, uh, geometry, and uh, basically I want to use the fact that. Uh, uh, you start with uh, this set of, uh, so I want to do three and four at the same time, okay, because it makes uh, sense. If we, uh, alternatively, you can take care of three. So remember that three was uh, uh, some kind of quasi independence conditions. Uh, and then uh, you have a foliated version. But in fact, uh, modern technique allows you to have the foliated version right away. So what you, uh, what you do is, uh, uh, is the following. Uh, again, let me try to draw a picture. We don't have much time, so maybe I'll just uh, use pictures. Uh, so uh, let me start with uh, uh, some kind of uh, the set of the form uh, lattices of the form lambda sub y. Uh, and then you apply uh, uh, a sub s. And uh, the, the way it is set up uh, shows you that, in fact, you get uh, uh, 
so you, you, this uh, this manifold gets expanded and it actually becomes equidistributed in the in the sense that if you fix uh, uh, some uh, some open set u then the proportion uh, will be approximately the measure of u okay uh, and uh, in fact uh, there is an exponential rate of mixing and this uh, gives rise to exponential uh, rate of equidistribution with some error bound so uh, uh, i think we first spelled it out uh, uh, well, the first it was spelled out in the thesis of Margulis about geodesic flows uh, and also flows, but then we did it for flows of this type, uh, deriving from the exponential mixing of the action. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, we need a, a refined version, so-called effective double equidistribution, which is the paper of uh, Michael Bjorklund and uh, Alex Gorodnik. Okay, so. Uh, so there are some uh, strong uh, dynamical uh, uh, dynamical results which uh, make it possible to uh, try at least to extract this uh, quasi independence conditions but uh, the bad news is that uh, these results uh, so applicable to smooth functions And so to apply uh, this machinery, this sets BJ, uh, which uh, you start with, uh, uh, need to be approximated by smooth functions and the coefficients and the mixing estimates depend on the size of their derivatives. And the size blows up as J goes to infinity because they, uh, these uh, sets become thinner and thinner. And uh, well, I don't have time uh, to convince you that uh, uh, if you take care of this uh, uh, factor, this appearing of big derivatives, you actually end up uh, having this uh, very strange uh, technical condition, which uh, I don't even want to mention. I'll, I'll mention it anyway. It's uh, somewhere, right, somewhere here. Uh, but uh, the point is that if you, in addition, assume this uh, this convergence, you get uh, you are able to use this uh, mixing mixing technique. Okay, so uh, uh, I guess uh, I have to stop now. Let me uh, let me just mention. Uh, so I left this uh, page blank just in case I have uh, one minute. So maybe I'll have one minute to, uh, to mention uh, uh, some extensions. And one is so-called approximation with weights. Okay, and uh, uh, again, I don't want to spend much time on it, but uh, weights basically means that you treat uh, 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 various uh, components of Q and various linear forms uh, differently. And uh, so you have a vector alpha and vector beta. And then uh, you uh, do absolutely the same, but uh, your uh, dynamical system uh, is now as depends on this alpha and beta and this is just uh, e to minus alpha one s up to e to minus alpha m s and here you have e to beta one s e to beta m s okay so all these guys uh, were the same uh, but in fact uh, you can uh, make them a little bit different and still prove more or less the same result because this uh, Bjorklund Gorodnik uh, condition actually takes care of uh, even this this type of uh, uh, expansion okay and finally uh, 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 you can also uh, uh, use other norms 
Okay, so everything I did was uh, for the supremum norm, and then we ended up having this very strange critical locus. But if you choose another norm, you can still save, uh, you can still state a uh, uh, number theoretical problem. For example, you can take Euclidean norm. And then you have a different uh, setup, and uh, you can still ask the same questions about uh, improvements of the uh, DFS theorem. And this is uh, uh, work I did with uh, Anora Rao that I don't really have time to mention. But for example, uh, when uh, the norm is Euclidean and when uh, M and N are equal to one, we have a necessary and sufficient condition uh, uh, for this uh, set to have uh, measure zero full measure without any extra technical assumptions. And uh, here we are lucky to be able to derive it from some dynamical systems results of Francois Mukura. Uh, okay, anyway, I guess I'm over time already. So let me uh, stop here and uh, write a big thank you for your attention and the invitation. <laughs>